When our son Shaden was six weeks old, I was getting him ready for bed, looked into his eyes and could not see his pupils. They were just this grayish, marble-like haze. And so I rushed him to the ER and pretty quickly he was diagnosed with glaucoma. Over the next three months, he had three surgeries where they cleaned up the, I don't know, the gutter system of his eyes, something called the trabecular mesh. And Shaden's eyes have been working great ever since, praise God. Uh, toward the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spent some time talking about the importance of sight. He's talking about judging others, which is so easy for all of us to do, where we point our finger and we shake our heads in disgust at those people. But Jesus says, first, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. When you're more focused on the speck in your friend's eye than the log in your own eye, you are self-righteous. You're playing God. And Jesus understands self-righteous people are rarely self-aware. Jesus wants us to have self-awareness. He wants us to see. It happens to a guy named Saul in Acts 9. But before we look at Acts 9, let's get to the end of the story. Saul becomes Paul. He plays a huge role in the growth of Christianity. At the end of 1 Corinthians 13, Paul's talking about vision. He writes, now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. Depending on the translation, they might say, now we see with a vision that's blurry, foggy, dark, then we will see with perfect clarity. In the same verse, Paul writes, now my knowledge is incomplete, then my knowledge will be complete. So I wonder, when is then? When do we move from blurred vision to clear sight? When do we move from only sort of knowing to really knowing? Act 9 gives us a clue. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. Remember, this is the same guy, Acts 9 and 1 Corinthians 13, it's the same guy. And most of you are familiar with 1 Corinthians 13, not because of what Paul writes about seeing and knowing, but because of what Paul says about love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. I mean, the guy who speaks so beautifully about love in 1 Corinthians 13 is the same guy who's eager to kill Christians in Acts 9. How does someone go from wanting to kill people to wanting to love people? It takes a miracle. It takes God showing up, which is exactly what happens to Saul on the Damascus Road. He has an encounter with Jesus that leaves him blind. Three days later, he's in Damascus, and a Christian, a follower of Jesus named Ananias, shows up places his hands on Saul and prays for him. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. We call this Saul's conversion. His name is changed from Saul to Paul. God showed up and changed Saul from one kind of person to a different kind of person. God showed up and moved Saul from one way of life to a whole new way of life. Re remember that question I asked a couple minutes ago, when is then? When do we move from seeing in a fog to seeing with clarity? When do we move from partial knowledge to complete knowledge? It happens when we're converted. But if you read through Acts chapter 9, you will never see the word conversion. Instead, Luke says something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. When is then? It's when the scales fall from our eyes. The Greek word for scales is lepo. It comes from a root word that means to peel away. The longer I follow Jesus, the more convinced I become. This is what conversion is all about. Conversion is God out of love, removing the logs from our eyes. Conversion then is an ongoing day-to-day -day reality for each of us. And Paul's life shows us something pretty powerful. There is a connection between seeing clearly and loving greatly. When Saul was not seeing clearly, when Saul had scales and logs in his eyes, he was filled with hate. He had his initial conversion on the road to Damascus. And then 20 years of everyday conversion, he gets to a place where grace has been doing its work in Paul's life. And he is able to write, love is patient, love is kind, 
faith, hope, and love remain, and the greatest of these is love. So some questions for you today. What logs do you need God to remove so you can be free to love? Who are the people in your life who have the freedom to point out when you're being self-righteous and not self-aware? And then finally, how does this quote connect to Jesus' teaching in Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5? Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. May God be at work opening your eyes and removing logs today.